Well, praise the Lord. Welcome, welcome. Amen to New Beginnings. Amen. I'd like to say welcome to all our Facebook family and friends. Uh, today is what day? Hmm. I know it's the Lord's day. I understand it's the Lord's day, but gentlemen, I hope you didn't forget. It's another day as well. Can you remember what? Yeah, that's right. It's Valentine's day. Amen. Now it's not too late to run to the store and get your wife some flowers or, or some candy or a card. Just don't do it right now. Let's get the word in first. Let's get the word in first. Don't run to the store. Don't run to Walmart. Slow down. Don't go. You need to get the word of God first. Amen. Praise God. But after we hear from the Lord this morning, then you can go on out there. It's never too late. It's never too late to go get them flowers and candy and all the different things that you may want to uh, show your loved one that they are appreciated. Amen. Praise God. Now, you know, let me tell you now, my wife, she kind of celebrates me too. Now she, you know, went out and got me a little something, something as well. So, uh, amen. Equal rights, equal rights. Amen. My wife, she went out there and got me a little something, something. Amen. Praise God. Just to say, honey, you my Valentine too. I said, Oh Jesus. Oh, shut the noise. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. It's the Lord's day today, most of all, and we're so excited about it. And let me say this as well. Happy Valentine's Day to all the sisters in the Lord, all my Facebook family and friends, all the ladies, all the sisters in the Lord. We want to say happy Valentine's Day. Amen. And then fellas, you know, or whatever we get, a little extra there, that's good as well. Happy Valentine's Day to you too. Go sit down somewhere. Amen. It's the ladies' day. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just heard a man say, what? What'd you say? Man, we just celebrated Christmas. You better go get your wife some Valentine's Day. Something, boy. You better get, get on out that house. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, without further ado, we're going to get into God's word. Amen. And I'd like to say this as well. I ain't through yet. I ain't ready to get started. I'd like to say happy Valentine's Day to my mother. Yeah. Amen. She's 90 years young. Yeah. yeah, she's 90 years young. Mama, happy Valentine's Day yeah. from your son, Kevin. Yeah. And then happy Valentine's Day to my mother-in-law, Grammy. Grammy Wham. Grammy. Grammy. Happy Valentine's yeah. Day. And then... To my dear sisters, Connie and Rita, yeah, happy yeah. Valentine's Day to y'all as well. On behalf of my wife and I, we just love y'all. All the women that God has put into my life, from my mother down to, from my wife to my mother to my sisters and my daughter. Oh, ooh, I almost let that slip. Melissa, happy Valentine. That's my only daughter. You better watch yourself. Happy Valentine's Day, girl. You are a beautiful mommy. You're a beautiful mommy, girl. Love you so much. Amen. Well, without further ado, let's get right into God's word in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Father, we just thank you. This is the day you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. And Lord, we just thank you right now that as we get into your word, that your word will come alive to us. We thank you for the greater one among us, the teacher, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us into all truth. And Lord, we just thank you that we'll not miss to the left nor to the right, but we'll follow your perfect will regarding this subject. And Lord, we just thank you. We thank you. We honor you with everything that we have. If it had not been for you, where would we be today? And Lord, we just want to just take this moment right now and just lift our hands and just say, thank you. We love you, Jesus. You're everything to us. There is no life without Christ. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We cry, Abba, Father, Daddy. Oh, we just love you. Lord, we just thank you today. And Father, we thank you as we get into your word. Your word will come alive to us. We thank you. Your word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Yeah. And Father, I thank you that my tongue is like that of a ready writer, ready to write upon the heart of your people, your uncompromised, holy, and infallible word. And Lord, we shall be careful to give you all of the glory, honor, and praise for what shall be revealed through your holy written word. 
or through gifts of the Spirit. In Jesus' name, all that agree with this prayer, shout it. Amen. 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 Turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. Amen. Again, we welcome you out. Amen. To New Beginnings Christian Life Center Church. Amen. Sunday morning. It's Sunday morning, y'all. I, it's, I will say this, it is cold here in Mississippi. Yeah. I mean, now it might not be as cold as what's going on in Michigan, but I'm going to tell you, it's cold here in Mississippi. Amen. But how many of you know Jesus is still Lord even when it's cold outside? Yeah. Amen. Praise God. I don't care what time of year it is, God is good all the time, every year, every second. I mean, God is just good. He's been so good to us. Amen. Amen. Praise God, as you're uh, looking for Matthew chapter 6 there, and we'll pick up at verse 25, we're going to continue on the subject, and today I believe we're going to unhook. I mean, you know that God's word is pregnant. It always gives birth to new facets of revelation knowledge. You could never exhaust any given subject in the word of God. No, you can't wow. exhaust any given subject. You got to simply unhook. You want it because God's word is pregnant. It gives birth to new facets of revelation. Mm -hmm. Amen. But today we're going to attempt to unhook on this subject. And uh, I, I think it's a very, not I think, it's a very important subject. Yeah. And we've been talking about calm in the midst of chaos. How many of you know that this world, we are living in a chaotic world, Ooh. as we've been saying for the past several weeks, you know, it's, it seems like the world is on fire, you know. And uh, it, it just seems so chaotic. And the Spirit of God began to minister unto me and say, minister along the lines of how to keep calm. How to keep calm in the midst of chaos. You know, how to keep calm when the doctor has given you a bad report and, and you still, even Stephen, as it were, you're still calm, amen. And how to be calm when you have lost your job. You know, in today's world, they say, what, about 30 million people are unemployed? Wow, that is just astronomical, you know. But yet, even when you're unemployed, you can still keep calm in the midst of trouble. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. And then, you know, you got this COVID-19 thing spreading around. People are dying like flies. It seemed like people are dying like flies, you know. And it seems like every other day you're hearing about people dying, but you know, yet we can still be calm even in the midst of death. You know, the scripture comes up in my spirit. I will let nothing separate me from the love of God. I don't care if it's death. I don't care if it's unemployment. I don't care what's going on. You got all these conspiracy theories out here. You know, our government has gone crazy. All sorts of stuff going on in the political arena. I mean, come on, man. You, you, you name it, it's there. But we're talking about how to stay calm in the midst of chaos. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25, one of our text scriptures here. It said, therefore, Jesus is speaking. He said, therefore, anytime you see therefore, find out what is there for. Uh -huh. Amen. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought. That simply means don't even think about it for your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body. What you shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment. Uh -huh. Verse 26, behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? I mean, if God is taking care of the birds of the air yeah. and, and, you know, the beasts of the field, he takes care of them. How much more will he take care of you? Yeah. Verse 27 said, which of you by taking thought? Hmm. Which of you by worrying can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought? So he says it again. Jesus says it again. He's trying to get a point across. He said, why are you thinking so much? Why are you using your great matter so much? Why are you cogitating so much? Why take ye thought for raiment, your clothes? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. 
They toil not, neither do they spin. Verse 29, and yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so lo if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Verse 31, therefore take no thought. He says it again. Yeah. He quit worrying so much. Mm -hmm. Quit thinking so much. You know, that's what it gets you in trouble. It's hard to believe from God when you think too much. Ooh, that's the you know, your head will get you in trouble. On, that's why we say, see, faith has its own vocabulary. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm only moved by the word of God. Yeah. Well, you, and you know, the day that we became born again, our spirit became born again. Uh -huh. You do understand that man is a tripart being. Man is a spirit. He possesses a soul that deals with his mind, will, and emotion. And he lives in a physical body. Mm -hmm. The part of man that became born again, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. A new species of being that never existed before. Well, that's the spirit of man, the heart of man, the very core of man. But his mind needs to be renewed and body needs to be brought under subjection. Well, see, what gets us in trouble, what causes us to think so much is our soul. It's our mind, will, and emotion. It'll get you in trouble. God's word says, I'm going to take care of you. Your mind says, it don't look like it to me. Yeah, that's right. Huh? Yep. Come on. God's word said, you shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Your body said, boy, it looks like you're going to die to me. Yep. Your body said, huh? Your finances said, boy, you unemployed. Huh? You, you know, the world is saying you're unemployed. The word of God said, no, I will provide for your every need. Mm -hmm. So whose report are you going to believe? Let's think about that for a moment. Mm -hmm. Whose report are you going to believe? Let God be the truth and let every man be a lie. Yeah. We got to choose to believe the report of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you lost your job, God's still going to provide for you. I don't care what the doctor is saying. God will heal your body. He's already healed your body over 2,000 years ago. Now it's up to you to receive it. Believe that you receive. Our job is to believe, not try, quit trying to figure out how it's all going to come together. That's when we get in trouble. That's when we begin to cogitate. That's when we begin to use our human reasoning skills, you know. You get to the point where you're just ignorant. You know, you start saying things that don't, make, that don't line up with faith. And that's why you got to bring, you know, the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, that you got to renew your mind. Renew your mind to what? The word of God. God's word is the truth. And we got to get to the place where we start believing God's word. And that's why Jesus continues to say there in verse 31, he said, take no thought. He did not said it about two or three different times. And when a person is trying to tell you something and they say it over and over again, how many of you used to do that with your children? How many times your parents did it to you? Didn't I tell you? Now, didn't I tell you? Mama, I heard you the first time. Well, why are you still sitting here? Well, I done told you two or three times. Well, this is the Lord said, didn't I tell you? Take no thought. Quit worrying so much. Come on now. Verse 31. Saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewith all shall we be clothed? Now, I like what verse 33 said. But, now this is what you ought to be doing. And this is what Jesus said. Jesus said, but seek ye first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom or God's way of doing things. Seek the word of God. That's where your thoughts ought to be. Huh? And as you get into the word of God, the word of God will renew your mind. I said the word of God will renew your mind. To where you can get to the place where you're not taking thought. Verse 34. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. He says it again. Verse 34. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. 
Hallelujah. But notice there, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek God's way of doing things. Seek the word of God. Amen. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. Now, Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. And verse 6. Now, notice what the Apostle Paul, our second text scripture, the Apostle Paul says here, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. One translation said, be anxious for nothing. Now, when you get over in being anxious, see, then you get to thinking wrong. Uh, then you get to thinking wrong. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Let your requests be made known unto God. Now, notice what happened. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart <coughs> and your mind through Christ Jesus. Notice what will happen when you're not anxious. Notice what will happen when you're not anxious, see? And you're seeking God. Then the peace of God will kick in. <coughs> Excuse me. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, so keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things that are true, whatsoever things that are honest, whatsoever things that are just, whatsoever things that are pure, whatsoever things that are lovely, whatsoever things that are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we've talked about quite a few things there, uh, uh, but... Uh, we've been talking about, well, how do you stay calm? How do you stay calm in the midst of chaos? Amen. Mm -hmm. And we've already given you several ways to do that. Let's pick up <coughs> with, with the other ones that we're going to talk about today. Here's another way that you can stay calm. Now, remember how we talked about when Jesus, after he had taught the parable about the sower, sowing the word of God. And he was actually teaching his disciples how to have victory, how to experience victory in life. Amen. And, and then after he had did his seminar on the sower, soweth the word of God. Amen. Then he said, now let's get into the boat and let's go to the other side. He said, get into the boat and we're going to go to the other side. So in other words, the disciples got a word from the Lord that they would get to the other side. And on their way to get to the other side, we noticed that a, a little storm came up. The winds began to beat against the boat. Jesus was in the back of the little boat uh, asleep. And the disciples became afraid. Right after a seminar on the sower, so at the word of God. They got afraid and, and they went to the back part. The Bible said the hind part of the boat and, and woke Jesus up and said, Jesus, don't you care that we might die? And Jesus, you know, he could have said, didn't I give you a word earlier? I just got through giving you a whole entire seminar on the so and so of the word of God. Yes. All you had to do was take the word of God and deal with the situation. Mm -hmm. And then you could be just like me, sleep right in the midst of trials, calm in the midst of trials, calm in the midst, huh? of, trials. Calm in the midst of chaotic situation. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's any type of chaotic situation. God said that we can experience calm. He said, we can experience the peace of God. And, and, and so that's all they had to do was, was speak the word of God. No, so just like any great leader, Jesus, he got up from his sleep. He got up from his rest and he rebuked the wind huh? and he rebuked the sea. He told it, peace, calm down. He dealt with it. And then he turned around and looked at them. Oh, ye of little faith. In other words, why didn't you speak to the, the winds and to the waves? That's all you had to do. And it's the same thing true for us today. We already received a word from the Lord that we're going to make it to the other side. Now, when he said that you're going to make it to the other side, or in other words, that you can experience victory and you can experience winning in life, he didn't say that there wasn't going to be no storms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, no. None of us as born again believers are exempt from storms. None of us are exempt from chaotic situations. 
I almost heard a person just say, well, if you're in the will of God, nothing will ever go wrong. You're wrong right there. You need to read your Bible because a part of your 100 fold return is with persecution. You know, houses, lands, brothers, sisters. Also, it says what? With persecution. Notice what Jesus said. He said, I will with the temptation make a way of escape, a way of escape. In other words, you're going to go through some temptation, but he said, I'll be right there with you uh -huh. and I will provide a way out of it. Uh -huh. Are you with me? Yeah. And so he told him, go to the other side. And he, he didn't say that there would be no storm. He didn't say that nothing chaotic would happen. No, he said, I gave you a word. You'll make it to the other side and I'll be with you while you're going through the storm. I'm right there with you. Just speak the word and you'll make it through. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> no, they, they had to wake Jesus up. Jesus got up and did what they were supposed to do. Yeah. He dealt with the chaotic situation. And God expects us to deal with the chaotic situation as well. How? By speaking the word of God, by proclaiming the word of God, amen? And that way you can experience calm or you can experience rest in the midst of a storm. Yeah. And you know all the storms that we've been going through in our nation, in our own personal life, people dying of COVID, you name the storm, people unemployed, we can still experience peace in a chaotic world. We can experience the rest of God uh, uh, in times like these. I mean, you know, we're living in the last of the last day. But you can rest. I don't care what's going on around you. You can experience the peace of God, but you got to think on those things. And that's something that we already talked about. That That is one of the ways that we can experience calm in the midst of chaos. And, and, and that's to speak the word of God. Amen. Also, something else that we can do, and that is seek the Lord. When you're in a situation where you're supposed to be going to the other side and, and the waves begin to beat up against the boat of your life, yes. you got to learn how to seek the Lord. That's your opportunity. Like today, we're going through a lot from our nation, from, as we said, COVID-19, unemployment, all sorts of stuff. Well, here's your opportunity to seek the Lord. Not go out and do something crazy. No, don't lose your mind and start worrying and fretting and all that being anxious and fretting and believing all these conspiracy theories. You're just out of control. Your thought process. Trust me, I've been talking with people. They are out there, man. It's like, calm down. Just relax. Amen. You can have joy in the midst of trials. Uh, like the book of James says, you can have joy in the midst of trials, man, but you got to decide to become a doer of the word. Put the pressure on the promise of God. Uh, All right. So again, the next one is seek the Lord. Turn with me to Psalms 34. Yes, sir. Psalms 34. Now we're up to date. Psalms 34. Let me get there. Psalms 34. Seek the Lord. Here's your opportunity to seek the Lord. How many of y'all been seeking the Lord? I mean, you know, that we are in a chaotic world. I mean, everybody is in agreement with that. We living in some strange times, man. Yes, sir. Okay, so here's your opportunity to do what? Seek the Lord. Seek means to pursue the Lord. Go after the Lord. This ain't the time not to go to church. This is not the time not to go to church. What do you mean by that, Pastor? We're in a pandemic. Well, you can have church right there in your house. Uh -huh. You can have church yes, with sir. your pajamas on, get you a cappuccino, bowl of cereals. Come on, man. Oh, man, you can be sitting there eating your breakfast, going to church. You have church in your house now yep. through Facebook Live and through YouTube. Amen. There's so many different avenues now. And you know what? Some people not going to church even when you got all these different ways of going to church now, they still ain't going to church. And that's why they experience all kinds of uh, turmoil right now because they're not going to church by way of Facebook Live or YouTube. There just ain't no excuse now. You ain't got to drive in your car. You ain't got to put on your Sunday best. You ain't got to wear no suit. Come on, y'all talk to me right now. You ain't even got to put a suit on. I mean, you could be sitting there in your drawers. You could be sitting there with your, with your, with your look at that, I can't even talk, with your pajamas on and still getting the word of God. And some folks still won't get the word. 
And that's why they are, they are in turmoil right now. That's why they believe in all these conspiracy theories. They're trying to do life without Christ. Mm -hmm. There is no life without Christ. The way you go to church now, Facebook, YouTube, mm -hmm. and soon we'll be back in person services. Mm -hmm. But right now this is church and let's be faithful to it. You ain't even got to get dressed up. You ain't, mm -hmm. look, my God, there is no easier way to go to church today. Hey, man, there is no excuse now. You ain't got to worry about, man, them church folk be tripping. Okay, ain't no church folk. It's just you now. Folk be looking at me. Ain't nobody looking at you now. You're in your own humble abode. You're in your own house now. Come on now. I ain't got no clothes. You don't need any. You're in your own house now. <laughs> now all right, let's move on. Seek the Lord. Psalms 34 and verse 4. You don't see the Psalm of David. He said, I sought the Lord and he heard me. And what did he do? He delivered me from what? All of my fears. Wow. He delivered me from how many? All. All of my fears. What are you fearful of? If you seek the Lord, he deliver you from all your fears. Drop down verse 17. The righteous cry and the Lord hears. And delivereth them out of all their troubles. And I love verse 19. Mm. Uh, now let's read verse 18. The Lord is nigh unto them, or he's near them that are of what? A broken heart. And save as such as be of a contrite spirit. In other words, there's a brokenness about you. Verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but... Note there, many, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Mm -hmm. But even though all held and broke loose in this world, I mean, it's just chaotic everywhere. But the Lord, but the Lord, that's a sermon right there. Wow. But the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Wow. Delivereth him out of them all. Out of them all, glory to God, hallelujah. Let's go back to Psalms 27 and verse 4. Calm in the midst of chaos. How do I experience calm in the midst of chaos? I know people going through some tough times, even to death. I mean, how do I be calm in the midst of, I just lost my loved one. I don't care, you know, who it is I'm talking to right now. I guarantee you everybody, just about everybody in this world have family members or relatives or friends who have been affected by COVID-19. Yep, yep, yep. You know of somebody or friends who have died from COVID-19 and now you got to deal with it. Mm -hmm. I said, and now you got to deal with it. Mm -hmm. uh, come on now, you got some folk who maybe they didn't pass away, they didn't transition, but they're sick. That's right. Well, we can seek the Lord right now. Yeah. Here's your opportunity to seek the Lord. Psalms 27 verse 4 says one thing. The song David said, one thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after. That means pursue. Go strong. That I may do what? Dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Yeah. And to behold the beauty of the Lord. And to inquire in his temple. For, I love verse 5, in the time of trouble, he shall hide me. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me. Are we in trouble time? Yes. yes. For in the time of trouble, he'll hide me in his pavilion. Ah. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. And he shall set. Woo, stop, stop right there. And he shall set me up. The Lord will hook you up. He'll set you up upon a rock. Ooh, glory to God. So here's your opportunity now in a chaotic world to experience calm and rest and peace. How? By seeking the Lord. Next thing, you need to understand that the Lord is on your side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you want to experience calm in the midst of chaos, you got to get a revelation. I'm, come on now. Come on. You must get a revelation. You must get a revelation that God is with you. 
that God is for you, that God is your helper. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. You'll never go beyond. Jot this down. You will never go beyond the will of God known. You'll never get beyond. You'll never go beyond the will of God known. You got to know that you know that you know that God is with me. That my helper is with me. God is with me. If God be for me, who will what can be against me? Now, if if you want to experience calm in the midst of chaos, you got to know that God is with you, man. Yes. You got to know that God is on your side. Yes. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, part B. Let's drop down part B there. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. For he hath said, are y'all with me? Part B of verse five. For he have said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Ooh he said it. One translation said, I will never abandon you. Ooh, my oh my God. goodness. My, my, you know, I, I tell you, oh I have heard some people, you know, uh, being at the grocery stores or at Walmart, man, I hope these times don't last. I, 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 and then I heard one person say, it may just be like this forever. I said, oh boy. And then, you know, boy, you're just sitting there looking at them because you don't know them, you know, and you're just overhearing people's conversations as if it's over. I mean, life is over. Yeah. But notice what the scripture said. For he have said, I will never leave thee. Again, one translation said, abandon you or forsake you. And I love verse six. So that we may boldly say. That means say without hesitation. Say without hesitation. Say without hesitation. No second thought about it. So that I may what? Boldly say. This is what happens when you get into the word of God. And as the saints of old used to say, where it gets down on the inside of your knower, where you know that you know that you know that God was with me in the 50s. God was with me in the 60s. God was with me in the 70s. He'll be with me in the 80s and the 90s. God is on my side. He is my helper. See, you got to receive the word of God personally. You got to receive it personally. You got to accept the word of God personally. Yeah. You got to put your name in there. Yeah. That if God be for Kevin, who could be against me? Yeah. Now you put your name in there. I'm going to count to three and then you say your name. Don't say my name. Okay? One, two, three. If God be for Kevin, who can be against me? Say it again. If God be for Kevin, who can be against me? One more time. If God be for Kevin, who or what can be against me? God's on your side. It's not good enough just to know that he's on Christian side. You got to know for yourself. You'll never go beyond the will of God, no. You got to know for yourself, God is working with you. You got to know he with you when, when he said, let's go to the other side. When that storm arose, hey, Jesus is with me. This, this boat ain't going down. Oh, no, I ain't going down because I lost my child. Oh, I ain't going down because the doctor didn't gave me up. I'm not going down. Oh, I ain't going down. Why? Because the greater one, greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. Now, watch this. Now, watch this. I got a revelation for you. Watch this. Watch this now. Well, what if you go down? Well, then I went down believing God. Yeah. Ah, gotcha. There is no other way to leave this earth. There is no other way to go down other than, hey, I, I went down believing God. There is no other way. I heard Brother Hagan say that years ago. That thing stayed with me. You know, people was talking about the subject was death. And, and, and you know, people had their own ideas and thoughts about that. If you're in the perfect will of God, it'll never come your way and all that. And, and, and Brother Hagan broke out and said, there is no better way to leave this earth than believe in God. So if I leave this earth, I left believing God. There is no other way. Glory to God. Yeah. That's right. Believe God to the death. What did Paul say? I'm bold to live and I'm bold to die. Yeah. <laughs> Glory to God. I don't care what I see. 
Verse 6, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my what? Helper, and I will not fear. I will not fear what man can do unto me. Come on, guys. I don't care how chaotic things get. I'm not going to fear what man can do unto me. No, 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 no. I don't care what's going on. Well, what if it don't work? Don't worry about that. You just believe God. Hallelujah. You just learn to believe God. Yeah. Hallelujah. How about Psalms 46? Psalms 46. Well, how did he leave here? He left here believing God. There is no better way to leave here. <laughs> Glory to God. I left here believing God. There is no greater way to leave here. Leave here believing God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> it can be said that person passed from this life to the next. Believe in God. There it is, right? That's a word for somebody. That's going to help somebody right there. Yeah. Don't get into all that other junk. Well, you know, they left here because of this and left here because. No, no. I left here believing God. I was believing God, believing God for my health, believing God for this, believing God. There, Brother Hagin said, there is no greater way to leave here. Yeah. <laughs> Glory yeah. to God. There is no greater way to leave here. Yeah. I left believing God. Hallelujah. Psalms 46 and verse 1. God is our refuge and our strength. Woo. He's your refuge <laughs> and my strength. Refuge. And I love what the next words say. A very present help in time of trouble. A very what? Present right now. He'll be with you right now. Not right now, R-I-G-H-T, but R-A-T-T, rat. No such word. He'll be with you right now. Why? He's a very present help. Yeah. He's a very present help. He with you right now. Yeah. Not not after a while it'll all be over in the sweet by and by. No, 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 no. After a while, he's a present help. Right now. <laughs> right now. Wherever you might be. Yeah. Whether you in prison, where you at the house, at the hospital, he's a right now help. Mm. He's a right now, but you got to get a revelation on that. Not God will be here after a while. What you talking about after a while? Shoot, I need him right now. I need you now, right now. Glory. The, the Bible says what? He's a very present help. That means right now. All right, let's move on to the next one. How do you experience calm in the midst of chaos? Here's a big one. Are y'all ready? Think yourself happy. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Sometimes you got to think yourself happy. You got to think yourself happy. Glory to God. If you want to experience calm in the midst of chaos, man, you better get your laughter on. You better get your joy on. I said, you better get your joy on. You know what Nehemiah 8.10 said? The joy of the Lord is my strength. Man, sometimes you got to laugh. If you ever, I, I, got, I got a statement for y'all right now. I got a statement. I know I've been here before uh, on several occasions. Not many of them, but there's been one or two, maybe three occasions where you was in a situation, you said, oh, Jesus. <laughs> if Jesus don't come in, as it were, if Jesus don't come in and show up, I'm through. Glory to God. I, have y'all ever been there before? Yes, you, you just start laughing. Yes, sir. You just, <laughs> Woo, you know, how am I going to pay my rent? <laughs> Oh, Jesus, what you want me to do? Go rob a bank or something? Man, I, Lord, you just start laughing. And see, what happens is you work up a Holy Ghost lather. <laughs> you get to a, a Holy Ghost laughter, too. And, and, and man, I, I tell you, just, Lord, I, I'm broke as Job's turkey. Somebody, I, I don't get that one. Broke as Job's turkey? How about broke as the Ten Commandments? <laughs> Job's turkey. I, I, I'm still trying to figure that one out. I can understand as the Ten Commandments. Come on now, y'all. Come on, shake yourself now. Uh, you know, you get to a place where you just broke, you done lost your job. If y'all have been there before, you just start laughing. Yeah. And then the, the creditors get to calling you. You're trying to figure out, man, I in the world. <laughs> Shit. 
Barry, I ain't got all this money, y'all. Y'all can have it. Come get it. I mean, the car note, this, that. Come and get it. Lord, have mercy. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got to think yourself happy, man. The doctor didn't give you a bad report. You just started laughing. You said, what? <laughs> Lord Jesus. Are you serious? Yeah. Hey, you you better get your act together, man. If, if you're going to experience calm in the midst of chaos, man, you got to do things by the Holy Ghost. If you're going to experience calm in a chaotic situation, let me tell you, them first few words, watch this, or those first few expressions, Come on, y'all ain't listening. Not just the first few words, as I said last week. You got to be careful. Remember I said that? You got to be careful what come out your mouth immediately because that's what you're going to attach to. Uh -huh. It's even your first expressions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How you respond to a situation. Right. It'll take hold. Oh, man. Yeah, well, I, don't, I didn't know how to respond. Laugh. Mm -hmm. The joy of the Lord. Hey Amen. I mean, you just, I mean, I mean, I remember, uh, let me help y'all out a little, a, a little bit here. My wife and I, back when I was in Bible school in Rama in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, man. <laughs> oh Lord. The, the cars, the subject is cars, oh, my transportation. God. Oh, wow. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Man, we had drove this one particular car. I forget that. It was a little old, small, little blue car. Yeah, we had rode that car there. It wasn't no wheels left. I mean, the engine was shot. Have y'all ever been there before? A hoopty. We had a little old small, little, little blue car. And man, we rode. Come on now. Y'all ain't never been there before? I mean, man, we rode that thing. There it just wasn't nothing left. And, and then finally, man, we had to do something because we had to go to work. Both of us did. And man, shoot. We took it to a little small car dealer a little used car dealer. And, you know, they had another car that we were looking at, maybe purchasing, and we didn't have a dime. We so no we trying money. to figure out we no the money. way we was going to get that down payment was to trade in our hoopty. Yeah, that's right. And we, you know, that, 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 that man, I, I'm trying to get my words. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh we had to put a quarter oil in that thing every day. Every day. Have y'all ever been there before? Yeah. That was when you could change your own oil. Man, we had to put a quarter oil in that thing every day. And so we changed it before we went to the used car lot, right? And man, we had our fingers crossed, toes crossed. Man, everything was crossed. Praying in the spirit. Da, 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 turbo time. Man, we praying in the spirit. Every prayer language we knew of, we was doing it. <laughs> and so we went in there. And back then, this was some years back, right? And uh, what was this, honey, in the 80s, 90s? Oh, man. man, let me tell you something. When he said, I'm going to give y'all $500, I think it was $500. Oh, man. man, we was like, we oh, my God. God we was believing God for $500 to put down to get the other and vehicle. And Lord, I pray the man don't look under the hood. I got my wife here trying to talk to me. <laughs> Tell me how the story went. I'm going to tell it my way. Right, <laughs> that man said five hundred dollars. We were shouting on the inside like, oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Oh, this man just don't get it, do he? Glory to God. And so he gave us that money to put down on the next vehicle. And guess what? We sprinted off of that used car lot so fast. Yeah. Pow! We got out of there so fast because yeah, we, we didn't want him to look under the hood and then say, hey, sir, come, come back here. Ma'am, sir, come on back here. This car ain't worth a dime. No. Man, when the deal was transacted, he did everything. And, man, we took off. Pow! <laughs> All I know is I got me another car with $500 down that we got on the trade in. And I don't know what happened to that car to this day. And, and you talking about laughing. And to this day, me and the wife, we laugh about that thing. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. That's the kind of stuff. You get to the place where, man, all you could do is just laugh, man. Just laugh. How about Acts 26? And some of you are right there right now. And you don't know how. And you don't know when. But I guarantee you one thing. You better get, you better think yourself happy. You better get your thoughts in line. 
You better think yourself happy. God's, God's got your back. Like I said, you got to have a revelation that God's got your back or you're in trouble. Right, right. We're talking about how to experience calm and peace in the midst of chaos. Right. Well, you got to think yourself happy. Notice here what the Apostle Paul said, Acts 26, verse 2. He said, what? I think myself happy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's revelation right there. I think myself happy. You got to be careful what gets into your thought realm. You never will experience mm -hmm. calm or peace mm -hmm. in the midst of chaos. You got to think yourself happy. Sometimes you need to go turn a cartoon on. Mm -hmm. Go turn on one of your favorite shows where, where there's laughter and all that. Yeah. You know, you got to think yourself yeah. happy, man. Thought, That's man. why Paul said, well, think on these things. Mm -hmm. You know, what Isaiah 26, 3 said, I'll keep thee in perfect peace. Who's what? Mine is stayed on thee. <clears throat> yeah, you got to think yourself happy. You got to think yourself happy. Yeah, right. You got to get control of your thoughts, mm -hmm. your, your mind. You got to get control. You got to think, you got to think on some good things. Think of some, some, some good fun times that you've had with your family. Turn on, hey, turn on Scooby-Doo. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 three Stooges yeah. Lowell and Hardy. Uh, some, turn on something funny. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on now. If you want to experience calm in the midst of chaos, you can't keep thinking so daggone serious minded all the time. Yes, 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 yes. You got to shake it up. You got to shake this thing up. Mm -hmm. How about 1 Samuel chapter 30? 1 Samuel chapter 30. We're talking about how to have calm in the midst of chaos. 1 Samuel chapter 30. And verse 6. Let's read part B of verse 6. 1 Samuel 30, chapter 30, and verse 6, part B, the latter part. But David, he did what? Encouraged himself in the Lord his God. David did what? He encouraged himself. That's the same thing with think yourself happy. You got to learn to encourage yourself. Yeah. I said, you got to learn to encourage yourself because yeah. other people might not encourage you. Mm -hmm. Your relatives might not encourage you. Your children might not encourage you. Mm -hmm. Your friends might not encourage you. You got to learn how to encourage yourself. One thing, let me tell you, some of the things I've been through, you know, I've been in the hospital for a week and, yeah. and this was years back, yeah. you know, when I was going through some tough times, yeah. you know, and let me tell you, even though my wife, you know, she said, honey, I'll be there every day for you and all that. All that's grand and dandy to have your family there. Yeah. But there comes a time when your family's not there. Mm -hmm. The preacher ain't there. Ain't nobody there. Mm -hmm. It's just you. That's right. That's right. And when you go through tough times, anybody that's ever been through tough times, let me tell you something. You, let me tell you, you can testify that the time came when it was just you and God. Yeah. It's just you and God, man. Mm -hmm. Your family can pray for you. Your preacher can pray for you and all that. But then there comes a time in the midnight hour when it's just you, man. And that's when uh, David goes on and said there, you got to encourage yourself in the Lord. Yes. I said, you got to encourage yourself in the Lord. Paul said, you got to think yourself happy. Mm. He said, you got to think yourself happy. Yes. Yes. Here's yes. another one. And we're about to wind this thing down. Good, sir. Turn with me to uh, Proverbs chapter 17. Mm -hmm. You know, we could spend all day on these topics and, uh, yes. you know, but we got to move on. Proverbs chapter 17. So we can conclude our message for today. Amen. Praise God. Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 22. Here's something else. So uh, let's recap. Seek the Lord. Mm -hmm. Understand. The next one is understand the Lord is your helper. Mm -hmm. Number three here is think yourself happy. Yeah. And the fourth one here is what? A merry heart. A merry heart. If you're going to have calm in the midst of chaos, you got to have a merry heart. Proverbs chapter 17. And that kind of connects with think yourself happy. Proverbs 17 verse 22 says here, a merry heart doeth good like a what? A medicine. But a broken spirit, it dries up the bones. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Merry heart. You got to learn how to laugh, man. Yes. I mean, it's been proven medically that laughter helps to heal the body. Yeah. Laughter helps to heal the mind, all that. Mm -hmm. Laughter is very important. Note there, and it's not just talking about 
just you saying, ha, 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 ha. It's not just the laughter part. It, it, it's, it's, it's the joy. The of the laughter. Uh, it's the attitude of the laughter. It's the joy of the Lord. Now, you can be happy about certain things happening that's going your way. But can you still be happy when things ain't going your way? That's where the joy of the Lord is, is, is different than just, just the, the carnal laughter, just the carnal being happy. And no, no. But see, joy is, I don't care what's going on, I'm still happy. Yeah. Uh, that's why that joy, I choose joy. It don't make, you can have joy in the midst of trial. Mm -hmm. Joy says, you know, whether things are going my way or not, I'm still a happy camper. Yeah. And, and this is the idea. Here's the thought process that you must have. Uh, that a merry heart does good like a medicine. How about Proverbs chapter 15? Winding down. Proverbs chapter 15. And verse 13. Proverbs chapter 15. And verse 13. Are you there? A merry heart maketh a cheerful content. A merry heart makes what? A tearful countenance. That's how you carry yourself. That's, that's your expression of faith. Your countenance. Your countenance. Huh? Uh, how you, you know, like this one man said, I got joy. Well, shoot, you need to let your face show it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, tell you, having a merry heart will affect your countenance. Yeah. Your countenance. Oh, that's good. Yeah. How you look. How you carry yourself. Some people just walk around with a frown. Have y'all ever met people, they just walk around with a frown on their face? Man, some people call it a poker face, you know. Man, forget all that poker face. It's something about the joy of the Lord. It's something about having a merry heart, guys, that it will affect your expression, even this on your face. Uh, and, and, and again, it ain't just talking about just smiling all the time. It's just something about a person that's got a joyful heart. Yes, uh, it, it affect your continence. Mm -hmm. You just you just look like a happy person, a fun. To, have you all ever met a person that just seemed to be fun to be around? Yeah. Their, their continence. Let me tell you. Well, that's what a merry heart will do. It will affect you know people even wanting to be around you. Yeah. Some folk you don't even want to be around. Cause, oh no, I ain't talking to that person yeah. because their continence on their face is not showing it. Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me? Yeah. And then one last one. Hope thou in the Lord. Hope thou in the Lord. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 13. Proverbs chapter 13. If you want to experience calm in the midst of chaos, uh, you got to learn, hey, keep hope alive. <laughs> Who was that? Jesse Jackson that kind of coined that phrase. Uh, keep, keep hope alive. That's so very important. If you keep hope alive, hope will keep you alive. Ooh, that's good, isn't yeah. it? You keep hope alive, uh, hope will keep you alive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We talk about how to experience calm and peace in the midst of chaos. Yeah. You, you got to hope thou, you got to put all your trust in the Lord. Yeah. You got to lean on the Lord. Mm -hmm. huh? Proverbs chapter 13 and, and verse 12, it said, Hope deferred make the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. See, when you ain't got no hope, you will experience sickness. Hope deferred, rejected. That's why you got to keep hope alive. You got to hope thou in the Lord. You got to hope in the Lord. See, before you even get to faith, you start out hoping. Uh, the first step is hope. Then you got to keep going. Then you enter into faith. Huh? Hope deals with your expectancy, your trust. Hope deals with trust. I think about Proverbs chapter 3. Let's go there. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord or hope in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Yeah. Don't be wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and depart from evil. But note that, just trust in the Lord. A better way of saying that is, Hope in the Lord. And as you continue to hope in the Lord, you'll remain calm in the midst of chaos. Yes. And then finally, Psalms 31. Psalms 31. This is our final scripture. And verse 24, I believe it is. 
Yeah. Psalms 31 and verse 24 is the final way that you can experience calm in the midst of chaos. Mm -hmm. Man, you got to put your trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. You just got to learn to trust God and, and lean on him. Lean on his everlasting arms. Lean on him. Rely in God. Mm -hmm. Rely on God. God got my back. Rely. You got to know that God has your back. He's got your back, man. He's got your back. Note there, verse 24, Psalms 31, verse 24. Be of good courage. It said, be of good courage. Sound like the words that he gave, who was it, Joshua? Huh? Yeah. Remember he, he gave those words to Joshua because he was about to take over leadership, right? Mm -hmm. From Moses, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He said, be of good courage. Don't fret. He said, I got you, Josh. I got you, buddy. I know you got some big shoes to fill here from Moses. Got all these complaining folk, thousands of them, whining and complaining. He said, but be of good courage. Now notice here in verse 24, he said, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that what? Hope in the Lord. All ye that hope in the Lord. He said, be of good courage. And as you hope in the Lord, you will experience calm in the midst of chaos. Amen. Uh -huh. Well, how many of you have been blessed? I said, how many y'all's blessed? Amen. Amen. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. How to experience calm yes. in the midst of chaos. Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Don't forget today is Super Sunday. Amen. Praise God. So go ahead now and get your sacraments. Go get your little juice and your little piece yes. of bread. Amen. Praise God. My wife, she should have mine up here. Yes, here we go right there. Amen. Today is Super Sunday. I know it's Valentine's Day. Amen. Praise God. But I think it's very important. No greater day to do this yes. than on Valentine's Day. It's the Lord's yes. Day. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 26. As we get ready for communion here. In the name of Jesus. And I've got I've got my little cup. And you know, you can buy these in stores or you can order it online as well. Yeah, right. That'd be a great investment for you. Yeah. You can buy them in little boxes. I think they come in what, 12, maybe 24 or 36. Mm -hmm. And some of them are even larger than that, right. especially, you know, for a church. Mm -hmm. Amen. But you can buy these little cups. It's got the little, the little wafer, little juice. How I many you know it's important to receive Holy Communion? Yes, Lord. I said, how many of y'all know it's important to receive Holy Communion? Yes, Lord. Uh, the Bible teaches us we can do this daily. Mm -hmm. yeah, I know people, I've heard of people that take communion every day. And that's great as well. Yeah. Do this in what? Yes, Remembrance Lord. of me. Yeah. Do it often, the Bible says. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. So prepare yourself now. Go do what you got to do. And we're going to read a few scriptures while you're doing that. Amen. I'll wait one moment. Amen. Praise God. Today is communion. Some of you are scrambling around. <laughs> it's okay. Let's go get you. Well, I ain't got no blue juice. Uh, blue juice. My kids used to call it blue juice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Amen. No communion juice, you know. Amen. Well, just get you some water. It, it doesn't matter. Now, don't, don't, now, don't go. Now, I ain't going to say that. I know y'all ain't that silly. Now, don't go get the real stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm going to leave that alone. Amen. But let's receive communion. Verse 26. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and that's what we're going to do before we partake. And then so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Mm -hmm. So we see that the bread it represents the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that the juice, it represents the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I want to read one more scripture to you. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and Lord, we just thank you. Oh, we thank you, Lord. I'm going to the book of Isaiah. Amen. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Isaiah 53. I'm going to hold my place right there in 1 Corinthians. Isaiah 53 uh, uh, and verse uh, 1. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? This is Isaiah prophesying about the Messiah to come. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. And as a root out of the dry ground, he hath no form, no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him talking about Jesus Christ yes. as he went through the garden of Gethsemane and you know Jesus needed help and, and that the garden of Gethsemane represents the place of the crushing mm -hmm. and this is where Jesus as it were uh, began to weep as it were with great drops of blood mm -hmm. and, and the angels had to come and minister to him he asked his disciples could you not tarry with me for an hour and uh, they were asleep he come back what second time third time he just says sleep on this was man's greatest opportunity to, uh, uh, to partner with Jesus as he was going through tough times in the Garden of Gethsemane. And then after the Garden of Gethsemane, then they took him to the scourging post. After, you know, that they had arrested Jesus, took him to the scourging post, and they beat him with the cat of nine tails. They began to scourge him. History tells us that most people that were scourged back in that day died at the post, but Jesus did Bible says, with his stripes, you are healed. Every stripe that was placed upon his back, verse 3 says, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him that was despised. We esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity, chastising of our pieces upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Jesus at the scourging post, yes. they beat him to the place where he did not even resemble a man. He did not even resemble a man. Why did he do it? He did it for you and I. Mm -hmm. Jesus, oh, Jesus, we just thank you today. Mm -hmm. Lord, we honor you today. Yeah. Uh, that you went through all that just for us. Mm -hmm. Communion is also called a love covenant yeah. between God and man. Yeah. He came from heaven to earth to show us the way. And yet Jesus, with every stripe, 39 save one stripe. Yes. 39 represents every major known disease in mankind. We are healed. Yes, Lord. And this was over 2,000 years ago. This is what communion is all about as we remember. Then they after they scourged him, boy, he went through some tough times. Why? Because of you and I. Mm -hmm. Then they made him go through the Via de la Rosa, which was a, the longest route to get to Calvary Hill, mm -hmm. where he would be crucified. My wife and I have been there. We've been to Israel, and we've journeyed along that route. It's the longest route to get to Calvary. Mm -hmm. On the cross, Jesus died for you and I. And you know what? His blood still speaks. Yeah. Jesus, we're just so grateful. Lord, we're so thankful. Yes. And that's what communion is all about. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Every stripe that went up on his back represents our healing. Yeah. I've seen countless numbers of people who have received their healing right during communion. And perhaps it might be you today that need healing. Maybe some of you that may have COVID, you need a healing. You need to partake of communion. Mm -hmm. So begin to focus in on what you need from God. And we're going to believe God. It's going to happen today. This year we're believing for signs and wonders because that's what it's going to take to get through these chaotic times. Yes. So Father, we just thank you right now. Therefore we partake, Lord. Lord, we ask you to forgive us to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you for the bread that represents your body, yes. the juice that represents your blood. Yes. Lord, if there's any sin in our lives, Father, we ask you to forgive us. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness in the name of Jesus. Yes. Father, we just thank you. We believe that we receive our forgiveness in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. And amen. Back to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Reading at verse 23. At this time you may receive the bread and the wafer. Put it in your hand. 
For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. You may receive in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you. Hallelujah. And with his stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. Thank you for complete thank manifested you, healing of my body, thank you, Lord. of my respiratory yes, system, of my heart. Yes, yes. Whatever part of your body it is, just thank God for your healing. Oh, just thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you with every stripe. I am healed, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Lord oh, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Reading verse 25. At this time, you can pull back to receive your juice. Yes. After the same manner, also he took this cup. And when he had supped, saying, This is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Remember, we're the blood bought church, the redeemed yes, of the Lord. Lord. Without the shedding of yes, blood, Lord. there would be no remission of sins. Yes, Lord. Father, we receive your blood. It still speaks. It says you're forgiven. It speaks. Yes, Lord. You're whole. Yes. You may receive. Hmm. Hallelujah. Ooh, glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, just lift your hands right now and just thank the Lord. Just thank, thank him. Lord. Thank, thank him. You, Father, we just thank, thank you. you. Oh, we thank, thank you. you Lord. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus. You, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, how I many of you have been blessed today? <laughs> Man, I'm so used to singing songs yes. and crank up the band and let's have church. That day is coming. Amen. Yes. But man, we've had a good time today. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I tell you, God is good all the time. Well, it's opportunity to give. Amen. It's opportunity to prosper. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And new beginnings is possible because of your charitable contributions. Amen. You guys have been so faithful. Oh, you're so honorable with your giving. As a result, God's going to bless you far beyond what you can ever imagine or think in the name of Jesus. Yeah. You know the word of God says, give and it shall be given unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Shall men give unto our bosom? For God loves a cheerful giver. How many cheerful givers do we have yes, this morning? Yeah. Amen. Praise God. And amen. Praise God. And, and I trust as well that you have received all of my members and supporters. We sent you something in the mail that told you about our building project, Future Now. I trust that everybody have received one. If you have not received a package, just, just contact, amen, Pastor Leslie. Yes, amen. Just call Pastor Leslie at 601-613-9482. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And your statements were inside that package as well. Your giving statements for the year. Amen. You know, it's that time of year. Amen. Income taxes. Amen. Praise God. Your statements were in that package as well. So you need to contact Pastor Leslie if you have not received that in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Now, there are three ways that we encourage you to give. Number one, through PayPal. And that's New Beginnings, plural, clc.org. Again, PayPal, New Beginnings, plural, clc.org. The second way that you can give is Cash App. And that's at New Beginnings, plural, CLC. New Beginnings, plural, CLC. Or you can simply just mail it in at P.O. Box 320658. P.O. Box 320658. And that's Flowood, Mississippi, 39232. Amen. Praise God. Well, I trust that you've done all that you're going to do regarding our tithes and offerings. You know, the Bible tells us uh, to bring our tithes and offerings, amen, that there may be meat in mine house over there in Malachi chapter three. He said, prove me now herewith. Here with what? Your tithes and offerings. If I will not open up the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive 
in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, let's hold up our offering to our great high priest and let's agree in faith. Heavenly Father, once again, we do kind of the honor and the privilege to give this day. Father, we thank you that as we give, that you'll give back to us good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over so men get to our bosom. And Lord, we just thank you today, Father, that as we give, it'll cause new beginnings to continue to enlarge its tents so that we can reach out uh, to a lost and dying world with the glorious gospel. Father, we just thank you that we got favor with you as well as with man, Lord. And Father, we just thank you for our new building in the name of Jesus. We thank you that we're debt free, not just for our church, but our members and our supporters. We praise God that they're debt free as well. Ministering spirits go forth now, cause our return to come unto us, for we have need of it for the kingdom of God's sake, as well as our own. Father, we do common honor and privilege to give in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Praise God. Well, we've had a wonderful day today in the name of Jesus. I want my wife to come at this time. Hey, it's Valentine's Day. And amen. Praise God. Honey, happy Valentine's. Happy Valentine's. Girl, you're looking, boy, like some, some biscuits and gravy. Biscuits. I can just sop you up. Yeah, that's all Oh, good. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> amen. Now, my wife got a few things that she need to uh, um, read to you today. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Honey, uh, what do you have for us today? Well, uh, I, uh, happy Valentine's Day to you all. Yeah. Of you. you all are, remember that you, God, the Lord, is our first Valentine. Yeah. He teaches us how to love, yeah. and we share that love with each other. And yeah. so we know that you are the apple of God's eye. You are his Valentine. And so we just want to say happy Valentine to you. Now, um, mm -hmm. uh, we need to, if you all can just join us in faith in uh, prayer, got a prayer request from Michael and Betty early. Okay. Their son was admitted into the hospital, and yes. so he needs prayer, and so they, they want us to pray for him that uh, the fluids, he had a fluid build up, and we're going to pray that for his healing, okay. Michael and Betty Early's son. And also, we want to uh, keep in in our hearts and our and our, uh, and our uh, prayers, mm -hmm. the uh, Price family, Dr. Yeah. Frederick K. C. Price, went home to be with the Lord. I believe it was yesterday. Yeah, and he was one of the generals. The day let me tell you, this is where let me tell you, especially for African American yes. pastors, he Fred, honestly, he taught us how. That's true. To pray, he taught us how to pastor. That's true. I mean, uh, now you know we call them what word churches, uh -huh. charismatic churches. That's right. Fred Price was on the front line. He's a general. Another general has gone home. That's right. Amen. And That's and right. now therefore there is laid up for him a crown of righteousness. Amen. And we're you know we're sorry that he's moved on, but we're glad because now he's in the presence of God where he's experiencing that fullness of joy. And his fruit is continually yeah. to produce through yeah. his son, through his family, and through all of us. All yeah. of us have some of his fruit in us. As uh, speaking for my husband, he had the opportunity to uh, escort Pastor I Price, sure sure uh, when he came to Detroit to Word of Faith, uh, Bishop Butler yeah. had uh, my husband to be the one to escort him around, him and yeah. Sister Betty. That's right. And it was an honor. And that's something I had the honor, honor to do yes, that. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And on several occasions, he had an opportunity to do that. And so we're, we're just uh, going to pray for that, for the Price family. Mm -hmm. His the ministry has revolutionized yeah. the black church. Yeah. <laughs> not just yeah. not just the black church, but I'm talking about uh, the black white church. churches as well. Yeah, but, but I'm especially you, the African American church. Revolutionized. What a general. Yeah. What a man of God. And so let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, yeah. we yeah. praise yeah. you and we thank you for Michael and Betty Early's son who was admitted into the hospital today. We speak healing to his body right now yeah. in the name of Jesus. Fluids, you have to leave that his body ex Says fluid yeah. in the name of Jesus. Regulate that body in Jesus' name. Yes. We plead the blood of Jesus over him. And also we pray for the Price family. Yes. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, by the comfort of the Holy <coughs> Spirit, that yeah. he's going in and comforting their hearts and minds yes. through Christ Jesus. And Lord, strengthening them yes. because the legacy lives on. Yes. It lives on in little Fred, Fred Jr. It lives on in his children. Yeah. And of course, Mama Betty. Wow, what a beautiful woman of God. Yeah. 
yes. lives on. Yes. And so we thank you for their ministry. We thank you for the fruits and the seeds that they have sown in all of our lives yeah. and is constantly bearing much fruit in yes. the kingdom. Yes. And we give you the honor. We thank you for the life and legacy yes. of Apostle Frederick K.C. Price. Yes. What a man, what a general, yes. what a God, what a what a pastor. Yes. In Jesus' name, we Jesus thank you for name. it. Amen. Amen. I think we got it. Yeah. Amen. That Pastor Price, let me tell you, yes. he, he, he taught he taught my pastor how to yes. pastor. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, Fred Price, Pastor Fred Price, and uh, whew, what can I say? A man that shall be missed. Amen. Yes, Glory yes, to God. yes. All right. Valentine's Happy Valentine's Day <laughs> once again. You know, we love you guys. And just remember that Jesus is Lord.